Hey folks, John Thompson, Spring Framework Guru. So the video you're about to see is a module from one of my Spring Online courses covering Spring Core. Uh, I hope you enjoy it and a lot of good content in here. And if you like what you see, please head over to my website, springframework.guru, and you can learn more about my courses there. Hey folks, John Thompson, Spring Framework Guru. So in this module, we are going to take a look at setting up a, a login form for Spring Security. And what this form needs to do is capture the username and the password value, and it's going to pass it into Spring Security. And Spring Security is going to do the authentication for us and say whether or not that, that person is, is allowed into the system. And this is going to utilize some of the configuration that we've already set up as far as the authentication that the DAO authentication provider that's going to go into the database and match up that username for us and come back and, and do the authentication. So let's go ahead and take a look at the login form that I set up now. Okay, I want to step you through the login form for Spring Security that I set up. And what we're going to do, let me scroll up. This is a basic time leap template that I've set up for us. Uh, follows the same pattern that we had before. And I'm going to scroll up here a little bit. And we want to take a look at the form element starting on line 23, going down to about line 48. Now, what this is going to do is it's calling it a, an object login form, and it's going to post to an action called login. So it's going to post to that URL, and Spring Security is configured to listen on, on that for a pair of properties of username and password. And these properties are configurable, and if you're using just Spring Security, you do have to set these properties manually. But Spring Boot is providing a sensible defaults for this, and this is something that can be override or overridden, but I just want you to make you aware that these are defaults being provided by Spring Boot. So we're gonna to go to the, we're gonna post this form to slash login and Spring Boot is configuring this. So Spring Security is gonna be looking for a post to that with the properties of username and password. And let me step through this a, a little bit closer. On line 25, we are setting up an if statement and I'm using the bootstrap alert danger box so if there's a problem with the username and password, it's going to redirect to this and say that it's an invalid username and password. So we'll, we'll get the error box there. And this error section is going to be triggered based on a parameter in the URL called error. And also we can go to slash logout to log out the user. And when that happens, it's going to redirect to the login URL with a parameter called logout. And if that parameter is present, now we're going to do a green box alert success saying that you've been logged out. Now in line 33, this is where we get into the first text input box. And we can see that it's got a, a name of username, an ID username, and it's a, a text value. And this is a value that Spring Security is looking to capture the username in. On line 33 there, you can see that I have a test. If it's an error, we're going to turn those into errors. So they'll be highlighted red for the user to know that there is a problem. And then the same on line 40, we do the text box for the password. We also have the error sensing there and also ID and password. Now let's go ahead and take a look and see this in action. And toggle over here. If I try here, I'm going to use a, a bad password, ID and password, just to show you the error handling. And now you can see how the invalid username and password came up. So if I do M Weston and password, now I can see that I've been logged in and that I get access. And the other thing I want to show you is if I do log out, now we can see the green box here of, of the form and toggling back over to IntelliJ, taking a look at that form this section here on 25 to 31 you can see how if i have a parameter of error i get the invalid username password or if i have the parameter of log out i get the green box of log out so take a, a look here so you can see in the url at the top i have a question mark log out and that's the the parameter being passed in and that parameter is going to trigger the login box and when i have a, a bad ID, now we, we can see that I get the parameter error and that's what's triggering that red box. So let's go ahead and log in. 
now now we can see and I'm back at the index page I can go to to customers I can also go to users and these are both URLs that we secured to an authenticated account and if I come back over here and I go to log out and if I come back to the root now if I try I get get the login page on either one of these because my session my authentication has been logged out but I still can go to products because products is allowed for anyway okay in this module I showed you how to set up the login form and how that works so that form is going to post a special URL that's configured for spring security by the default parameters in spring boot at a, a URL of login and that form is going to post there with the parameter of username and password and then Spring Security is going to go through and use that user DAO authentication provider that we set up. And it's going, going into the database, pulling out the user information. It goes through our conversion service. It also does our password encoder. It grabs that. It checks the password. If that matches, the user is now authenticated. And we have an authenticated user in the system. And that allows that user to access the secured URLs under its authentication. And at this point, I'm just showing you authentication. I haven't got into any role-based stuff. Didn't want to confuse the issue, but now I've shown you how to create that login form to get the user information. So we can see how this is all, all the pieces have been fitting together. We've done a lot of work in this module setting everything up, but that we have that user DAO that's been configured for Spring Security. Now that form is, is enabling Spring Security to utilize that. And now we're logging in and we also set up the, the URL security mapping. We can see how Spring Security is allowing or disallowing access as we go through the system. And the, the next thing we want to do is we're going to take a look at setting up some roles and that's going to be a, a whole little section in itself. But I just want to get you seeing how, where we're at. We've done a lot of configuration in the, the, this module uh, or in this section up to this point. So it's kind of like where everything all comes together now. So we have that, that user DAO authentication provider that we configured we configured spring security to secure those urls we set up a, a form an authentication form for the user to log in now we're creating a session in spring security and getting in and we can see how the spring security configuration is either allowing or disallowing access to these urls